dilations. We're going to identify them. We're going to construct them with a compass, and we're going to draw them on a coordinate plane. We're at 9.7a. We've got 12 previous videos for Chapter 9 that are linked in the description in the Geometry Playlist if you need them. So if this is Lesson A, you know there's going to be ones after it. We do have a B and a C, so this is just the first part of this lesson split into three parts, okay? We learned in Lesson 4.1, back in Chapter 4, that a dilation is a transformation that changes the size of a figure, but not the shape. The image and pre-image of a figure under dilation are similar. So if you take a look at this green figure right here, that's the pre-image, and then we've got our pink image. Well, this is a dilation because the figures are similar. And they're not flipped or turned, so it's only a dilation. We don't have, you know, a rotation with a dilation. It's just a dilation because it's not flipped or turned. For this one, here's the pre-image and here's the image. This is not a dilation because the figures are not similar. This has got a long part coming out here on the left side. This one doesn't. So that's not a dilation. They are not similar. For a dilation with scale factor k, if k, that scale factor, is greater than zero, the figure is not turned or flipped. If k, that scale factor, is less than zero, the figure is rotated by 180 degrees. So that would be like if it was a negative, right? We learned about that back in video 4.1a and 4.1b. There will be links to that in the description if you need them. For the construction of a dilation, you're going to need a compass and a straight edge. We can construct a dilation of a figure by a scale factor, k, and that'll be a 2. So our scale factor is going to be 2. That's our k. The first thing we do is we draw a triangle and a point outside the triangle, and that point is going to be the center of dilation. The next thing we do is we use a straight edge to draw a line through the center of dilation and each vertex of the triangle and make them kind of long because if we're making a dilation, we're going to have a bigger figure here, aren't we? So we need our rays to be coming out a little bit way past our figure, okay, our triangle. Now what we're going to do is set the compass to the distance from the center of dilation to a vertex. So we're going to pick the distance from this center to a vertex, and that's the distance we're going to use for the whole thing. We're not going to measure this, and then measure this, and then measure this. We're going to use this one measure, okay? We mark this distance along the line for each vertex. So we're using this same distance for each vertex. So we're going to go here, and we're going to make an arc, okay? We're going to go here, and we're going to make an arc, and we're going to go here and make an arc. All right? Now, we're going to connect the vertices of the image. We're going to use a straight edge, and we can connect these vertices here to make our triangle. And it's a scale factor of 2 because the image is 2 times the distance away from the center of dilation. So this actually would be like a midpoint, wouldn't it? It would be right in the center of this distance. See? So here we've got our diagram. Here's our center of dilation. We had triangle ABC, and by taking our compass and measuring this distance, we were able to go here and put an arc, go at B and put an arc, and go at C and put an arc, and then we connected those to make A prime, B prime, C prime. So in our construction, the lines connecting the points of the image with the corresponding points of the pre-image intersect at the center of dilation. And the distance from the center to each point of the image is twice the distance of the corresponding point of the pre-image to the center. So this is twice the distance of this. See? So let's talk about dilations. 
A dilation, or similarity transformation, is a transformation in which the lines connecting every point P with its image P prime all intersect at point C, called the center of dilation. I could have labeled these anything I wanted, but I chose these letters, okay? So that means the quotient of C P prime and C P is the same for every point P. And the scale factor of a dilation is the ratio of a linear measurement of the image to a corresponding measurement of the pre-image. So K, our scale factor, is going to equal the quotient of P prime Q prime and P Q. So it's the quotient of this segment and this segment, see, in this figure. A dilation enlarges or reduces all dimensions proportionally. A dilation with a scale factor greater than 1 is an enlargement or expansion. A dilation with a scale factor greater than 0 but less than 1 is a reduction or contraction. So, you can add this to your notes. If the scale factor k is greater than 1, it's an enlargement. If the scale factor k is greater than 0 but less than 1, it's a reduction. So, for it to fall into this area, it would have to be a fraction, wouldn't it? Like an eighth, a sixth, a fifth, a fourth, a third, a half, right? A twelfth, a twentieth. It would still be bigger than one, zero, but it would still be less than one, see? Could be fifteen sixteenths, all right? We can dilate by a fraction of the distance. We measure, then mark, a half the distance from P for our scale factor k to be a half. So if our scale factor is a half, and we've got from p to a here, we've got this distance, we can measure this, and it's 9 centimeters, and if we want to do a scale factor of a half, it's going to be half this distance, isn't it? So p a prime is going to be that 9 centimeters times half, which would be 4.5 centimeters. So this distance would be 4.5 centimeters. And if PB is 12 centimeters, well then PB prime is going to be 12 times a half, which would be 6 centimeters. So that means this distance is 6 centimeters. And if PC is 10 centimeters, well then PC prime is going to be 10 times a half, so that'll be 5 centimeters. And we can mark the points on these segments, and we can draw our triangle. Looking at this diagram, if from P to A is a scale factor of 1, if that's the measure we're going to use, we could take our compass and put the point here and draw an arc for a scale factor of 2, and we could put it here again and do another one, and then that would be a scale factor of 3 for this whole thing. We can put the point here and draw another one. That would be a scale factor of 4. We could even go and... Once we have that 4, we could measure that distance with our compass and then do another 4 to have a scale factor of 8. We can use our compass to draw enlargements based on the distance from P to A. We could also use from P to C if we wanted to, but we're only going to use 1. We have to choose 1. So if segment PA is 3.5 centimeters, we don't have to use our compass, we could use math. If this is 3.5 centimeters and we have a scale factor of 8, well then PA prime is going to be our scale factor 8 times that 3.5 centimeters. That'll give us 28 centimeters. So we can do it with a compass or we can do it with math. So this is for the art students out there. Emma is creating a wall mural from a drawing in her sketch pad. And she divides the drawing into squares and dilates each square by a scale factor of 12. If the drawing measures 8 inches by 10 inches, what's the perimeter of the wall mural? And the scale factor of the dilation is 12, so 1 inch by 1 inch square on her drawing represents 12 inches by 12 inches for the wall mural. We find the dimensions of the wall mural we're going to let B equal base and H equal height. So our base will be our scale factor 12 times the 10 inch drawing. That's 120 inches. And our height is going to be our scale factor 12 times the 8 inch 
side of her drawing, that's 96 inches. So her little 8 by 10 drawing is going to go up by a scale factor of 12. Now we find the perimeter of the wall mural. To find the perimeter of a quadrilateral, we can say it's 2 times the base plus height. So we're going to have 2 times the 120 plus 96, which is 2 times 216, which gives us 432 inches for the perimeter all the way around. If one inch on an enlargement represents x inch on the pre-image, the scale factor of the enlargement is k, our scale factor, is equal to the quotient of 1 and x. For dilations in the coordinate plane, if point P is at xy, if that's the pre-image of a point under dilation centered at the origin with scale factor k, then the image of the point is going to be p prime. We're going to do our scale factor times the x value and our scale factor times the y value. So if our scale factor is a 2 and p is at 1 for x, 2 for y, like this, then p prime is going to be our scale factor 2 times that 1 and for the x value and our scale factor 2 times the y value 2. And that means p prime is going to be at 2, 4. See? So if we have x, y, and whatever our scale factor is will be that scale factor times x for the x value and our scale factor times y for the y value. See? If a scale factor of a dilation is negative, the preimage is rotated by 180 degrees. For our scale factor k to be greater than 0, a dilation with a scale factor of negative k is equivalent to the composition of a dilation with a scale factor of k that is rotated 180 degrees about the center of dilation. So here we've got our little black triangle, and if our k, our scale factor, is a negative 2, that means it's going to dilate to the size of a 2 for our scale factor, but then it's going to rotate 180 degrees, so it would be right here. See? So if your scale factor is a negative amount, it's going to dilate and get bigger by that absolute value amount, but then it's going to rotate 180 degrees. See? And for identifying dilations, we know that a transformation is a dilation when the image is not congruent to the pre-image. It'll be bigger or smaller. It's a dilation. For dilations in the coordinate plane, we can draw the image of a triangle with vertices. A is at negative 1, 1, B is at negative 2, negative 1, and C is at negative 1, negative 2, under a dilation with a scale factor of negative 2, centered at the origin. So we can see the scale factors are negative, so we know we're going to have 180 degree rotation, aren't we? And the dilation of x, y is negative 2, because that's our scale factor, times whatever the x value is, and negative 2, the scale factor again, times whatever the y value is. So for a, we've got a negative 1, 1. We're going to do negative 2, that scale factor, times that negative 1 for the x value, and negative 2 times 1 for the y value to get a prime of a 2, negative 2. We're going to do the same thing for b and c. We're going to multiply the x values times a negative 2 and the y values times a negative 2 to get b prime and c prime. Now we can graph the image and the pre-image. So here's our ABC, and after we apply the scale factor of negative 2, not only is it going to go up by 2, but it's going to rotate 180 degrees because it's a negative 2. We can use the distance formula to prove that the triangles are similar. We learned that back in video 1.6. We can use this distance formula for the distance between these points to prove that they're similar. And the scalar can be used to find the coordinates of the vertices of the dilation in our example above. So 
We learned about scalar multiplication in our Algebra 2 13.4a video. If you haven't gotten to Algebra 2, that's okay. You could still watch that video. Algebra 2 is really not that big of a deal. Basically, what it's saying is, here is our x and our y values for a. Here's our x and y value for b, our x, y value for c. And what we do is we take our scale factor in this negative 2, and we multiply it to here, this negative 1. And negative 2 times negative 1 is a positive 2, isn't it? So we write it here for the x value of our a prime. Then we do this one. So we're going to multiply here and then the one below it for this column. Negative 2 times 1 is a negative 2. So that's our y value for a prime. We can do it for b. Negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4. So our x value for b prime is a positive 4. Then we do negative 1 times negative 2 times negative 1 for our y value for our b. And that's going to give us a positive 2 for our y value for b prime. Then we take the negative 2 times the negative 1 for our x value for c. And we get a positive 2. And negative 2 times negative 2 for our y value for c is going to give us a positive 4. So now we've got our x values and our y values for a prime, b prime, and c prime. Isn't that something? So keep in mind, a dilation is not an isometry because the image isn't congruent to the pre-image. It might be similar, but it's not congruent. The side measures are not going to be the exact same. But that rule applies unless the scale factor of the dilation is a negative 1, which makes a 180-degree rotation. Our next lesson is going to be the order of transformations. Does it matter? If we rotate a figure and then translate it, does it matter if we translate it and then rotate it? What if we had a rotation and then a dilation compared to a dilation and then a rotation? So that's what we're going to talk about in the next video. So now you know about dilations. You know how to identify them. You know how to construct them with a compass or just using the math with the scale factor. And you know that if the scale factor is greater than 1, it's an enlargement. And if the scale factor is greater than 0 but less than 1, it's a reduction. And you know if you have a negative scale factor, it's going to make a 180-degree rotation. So let's talk about the order of transformations, and I hope I'll see you there. Hit that like button for me. Bye.